the dark match comes back to the Houston Wrestling Radio Network. Ooh, I yeah. like this one. But wait. What? This isn't WWE. What? What? This isn't Ring of Honor. This isn't TNA. What? This isn't New Japan. What? What? what the fuck are we going to talk about tonight? All of it. What? <laughs> you can, nah, that, nah. That's some kind of fictional animal you're getting all that yeah. meat from. No, well. <laughs> so just spit it out. What are we talking about tonight? Wrestle Circus. Holy shit, Paul's Wrestle Circus. Yeah. <laughs> I still have a voice. I was, quiet. Like, I was quiet all day today to make sure I had a voice for this. Do you want to fill in the audience of what we did? So if uh, you were stumbling around Facebook yesterday, Scott, the Scott, the Scott from Scott, I think I threw one too many in there. And he's just <sighs> so we back. brought back the dirty heels once again. We invaded Austin. We went firsthand to check out Wrestle Circus. Scott was telling us he went to the last month's show. He's like, bro, you got to go. And guess what? Like Even he went. I did. This guy. He barely leaves his house. Mm -hmm. yeah. He had to get a job that's a mile away from his house because he thought the old one was too far. And he went to fucking Austin to watch this show. You're welcome. All right, man. <laughs> we had to celebrate. We actually made him drink. Well, there's no proof of that. Oh, there is proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll just keep it between us girls. Yeah, yeah. Wrestle Circus. <laughs> We've been talking about this the last couple of episodes that we were going. Last episodes. Uh, the last two, <laughs> Abel's like, ooh, Wrestle Circus, can I come? Nah. But um, we've been hyping this up. It's If you cannot make it to California for Pro Wrestling Gorilla, this is what you do. You get in the car. You take Well, first you take a shower, and then you get in the car. You drive to Austin. Boom, Wrestle Circus. We had guys from New Japan. We had a couple of guys from TNA. Ugh. We had a couple of guys from Ring of Honor. Ugh. We had some homegrown talent that's in the Austin area that's in charge that that had had some light to shine on Wrestle Circus. Uh, Lucha Underground was in full force. Um, good fuck. Where do you want to begin? <laughs> Man, this let, let's let's start about something real quick. The, the the promotion Wrestle Circus. It sounds corny when you first like wrestle circus. What the <laughs> fuck? Like we all know that wrestling is, you know, historically it's part of the sideshow of yeah. you know everything. So it's just weird, you know, to have that as a marketing. It felt like a gimmick. Like the whole thing felt like a like a comedy. I was expecting shit. a carousel and a midget with a beard and like the three boob lady. I felt like a comedy. Yeah. The, this the the, ask, the the presentation. It feels like it's not like a serious wrestling promotion. But then you see these cards that they like the last card that popped out. It was good, but this one, oh, you're gonna get all blurs and shit in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this this card, dude, from top to bottom, I mean, there was somebody from somewhere you've seen before, yeah, show up on this card. And I've always said this before in the past, like, like it, it kind of sucks that as big as Texas is, there's not a big like wrestling hotbed for like talent, like indie darling talent to show up to it's it's always in the it's ring always, of honors yeah. in the northeast that's where all that stuff happened pwg PWG's in california um, lucha libre for the most parts in mexico there isn't a lot of high california profile too. there's california. not a lot of high profile lucha wrestling here it's just for lack of a better term um students that are getting their feet wet you'll get like the main event of a card like some well-known in internet wrestling star like show up but that's it, you know. It's not like a kind of like a super car, like a super yeah. show for this. This for all intents and purposes, it was. And I and I said this a, a few years ago on our show. I was like, you know, it, it sucks that Texas like that. But man, if they if they had something like that, you know, I, you know, I, I gotta go to that. And the proof was in the pudding because he was there, I, dude. It's like you th this car that they brought out, like. You can't not if you're a wrestling fan. If you know who these people are, like you can't pass. Twenty five bucks is worth half of this card. I would say twenty five bucks is worth maybe four matches of this card, and there were eleven. If oh. you don't, if you don't count the dark match, which was basically a couple of students that are graduating from the wrestling school there like in Austin, a a a a APW or something. Yeah, yeah. and there's graduates of the school, and they had their moment in the sun, and then we get right into it, and I'm like. Fuck, DJ Z in this triple threat match. 
Unadvertised. It was an. It was <laughs> it's an un- not on this poster. It, it was, I had no idea it was, it was an unadvertised uh, triple threat. Uh, basically a cruiserweight match, pretty much for all intents purposes. But DJ Z was the first one to come out. Uh, we all was like, oh, we kind of pop for him. It's like, oh shit, okay, DJ Z. But who else? I couldn't. Jervis Cottonbelly and Jonathan Cruz. I have no idea who A and B were, but man, did they put on a fucking clinic? Yeah, it was fun, dude. Okay, Jervis, you've seen if I if you saw a picture of him, you know who he is because he I've he seen... looks like a character straight out of Doomsday Wrestling. Yeah, for anybody here in the Houston area that likes yeah. that that loves the comedy show Doomsday, which we're fans it's, of, it's basically a dude in a, in a gold lucha mask, but he's got like <laughs> he's he's got like a, a goatee like marked on it. He's got a like a sad like, like eyebrow, monocle, yeah, yeah, the monocle on one and this in a sad eyebrow, on one. and it works. He perfectly. came out handing flowers like roses to the crowd, and oh yeah, well they had some kind of monarch form, like the, he's the most over, he's like the most gentle whatever. I don't know, but he was over with the crowd because I think he's been from he's there. <laughs> He's, he's, he's local does, town. Yeah, yeah. So I had a fan in front of me goes, Hey man, you don't know who Ger- German is? I was like, nah, man. I'm not from here. <laughs> so really, y'all don't know who he is? Like, what the fuck? We're not from here. <laughs> the rules do not apply to us. We're learning. The other guy I didn't know who he was either. No. Um, I, I thought maybe because they kept chanting Lucha for him, so I didn't know if he was someone that we were supposed to know or something. I didn't I know he was, but all three of those guys, like you said, they put on the clinic because it was a very good opening match for their eye per view. Um and I gotta say, dude, this was like what their second or third show. I want to say this might be their sixth show. I mean, yeah. I have this list through a cage match. Um, their first show was the opening act, and that was uh, uh, October sixteenth of last year. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. This is their sixth show. But the, they've been they were they were smaller at first because I I remember first hearing about this. I don't think it was. Was it last last month's show? Was when we first heard about it mm-hmm. from from Scott, right? Yeah, he saw Pentagon uh, Junior wrestle somebody. Yeah. But and uh, he was, yeah, he was all over that. He said, We got to check this out. So, well, fast forward a couple of matches to my oh, we need, to, we need to bring this up. You click on the title for this episode and you notice there's something at the very end. It's called iPay Per View. Yeah, it was ten dollars for the first 24 hours, right? This was technically available for everyone to see all over the world. Therefore, as of now, my match of the week pick is this triple threat match. We're gonna open it up with it between. Desmond Xavier, mm-hmm. Phoenix, and Shane Strickland. Who? Well, let me help you out. Kill, Kill shot. shot. Kill Shot and Phoenix from Lucha Underground against local talent from here and all, from from. No, he's not. I asked oh, him. He's I not? talked to him. I, Clear it up. For I me. talked to him because I said, "Dude, uh, that was an awesome match. Where, where are you? Are you from here? Or do you wrestle here?" He's like, "No, I'm not from here. I'm not from the state." Uh, he says, "I'm from Ohio." I wrestle in Ohio, Michigan. Um, he says he goes to California. He's he's all over the fucking. He's just an indie star. I mean, uh, indie wrestler. Nice. Um, and yeah, very nice, humble guy. Um, we we talked to Killshot for a little bit too after the match, mm-hmm. and uh, he was even he sounded surprised at how good that match came out. <laughs> um, but I'm there with you. I think the whole audience in attendance would agree that was match of the night. Uh, but let's. I'm gonna say this for so far. If we're going off criteria that we normally set, it's I pay per view. This is my match of the week. But let's go into why was it the match of the week? Go into some details here. There's um, there's a lot of spots when there's a one on one match where like the one upsmanship when you're trying to top the other and every and, and they both come up uh, as a as a draw. Yeah. But it's hard to do that when there's three guys. Mm-hmm there was instant chemistry when you're looking at this match between these three guys and they Fluid. made They're everything work. I couldn't, I rumor has it the night before in PWG Phoenix hurt his hand and that's why he was icing his hand before and after the show. You could not tell because there were even Phoenix was like spot on. Everything was fluid. I couldn't tell any errors from where we were sitting. I think there was towards, towards the very end. I think there was a, a little botch towards the end, but even then, Fuck! <laughs> the whole match. Uh, uh, if we had a drinking game for every time a super kick was thrown, everyone would be dead. Oh, you like super kick parties? We got super kick parties. Oh party. yeah, there oh, was... for days. <laughs> oh, it was fun as shit. They were flying around everywhere. People in the first four rows, you got you got a souvenir, a bump, a bruise, or something because they were everywhere. Yeah, instant spit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's some. It was a slobber knocker, that's for sure. But there was. Um, of course, you need to talk to matches. You get kind of crazy. 
Um, they do get a little flippy dippy, but to my, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be as far as the flippy dippies and stuff. Yeah, yeah there was, but um, there was also some 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 hard hitting stuff too. There was the the mushroom stomp, a couple oh, of them. Yeah. There was one um, who out on the apron, right? Yeah. Oh. Who, who who actually did that stomp on the on the? Apron? I want to say it was the uh, kill shot Strickland. Yeah, he did one on the apron. <laughs> his opponent was on the apron, like he was standing up. And the, the opponent was like bent down, yeah. and he oh. Ugh. So basically, when he, when he did the when he did the the double stomp on his back, he went face first in the apron. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, towards the end, I think uh, Scott got a video, uh, and we posted that. I think we, we yeah. shared it on our Facebook page of the double stomp uh, onto the mat. And any dude, I, I'm kind of a mark for that. Just that double stomp when they're already on the ground, and when they land on him, and they kind of crumple when they hit him. <laughs> it just yeah. it just. Ah, it just feels like it was just your cave, your chest caves in, you know. Um, but there were so many good, um, like hard hitting moments like that. But there's also some, you know, it, it is what it is, like some synchronized, you mm -hmm. know, going back and forth. Typical lucha stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was the presentation was awesome. The crowd was into it, mm -hmm. and they there was no fucking let up. No, and it was, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is I would hesitate to say at 995 that's that's what the price of admission right there. It's a damn good it's match. Fucking good. Yeah. I, I we I have to find a way to buy this so that we can rewatch this mm -hmm. cuz um we might need to have able to see this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of matches we might need to have able to see this. Yeah. Um now the 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 999 or $10 or whatever it was to to purchase it um match wise top to bottom it's 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 worth the $10. However, my my only reserve is I don't know what the quality of the video itself is. Yeah. And it's not 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 on them, but first pay per view ever. They're yeah. editing what they're what they were using. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't expect perfection on the first try because yeah. that ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Um. Again, it's all it about quality. Show. Yeah, it's an indie show. In the so. ring is what you're looking for. Oh man. Um, if you're looking for pyrotechnics, <laughs> go somewhere else. Um. If you're looking for good commentary, I don't we know had, who the fuck they were. We talking. had pyrotechnics when the title changes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll get to no. That. We're we're getting right we're into getting it because right. we had a title match. Oh, yeah, before we get to the title match, before we get to one of the title matches, we talked earlier about how the theme of Wrestle Circus sounds kind of corny, but man, do they make this work? They do. The yeah. so their mid card title is called the sideshow title. Um, their tag titles are called the big top tag titles. And then they have the lady of the ring for their women's champion. And then for their main event, main event uh, dudes, they have the ringmaster yeah. heavyweight title, which basically just like in a circus, you have, mm -hmm. those are the tiers in a circus. And it, it works. It fucking works, dude. <laughs> like I, I was surprised how, yeah. how it just – if it, like now I'm expecting a carousel or some fucking like just to just like to add more ambiance you know, to it, you, you know, know like a juggler or something. It's, it's funny, like – when I was seeing the, the the event from last month when EC3 was there, uh, or whoever was the champion of the, mm. the time, and they said the ringmaster champion, I kind of giggle a little bit. That's, a, that's funny. It makes it's Wrestle Circus and the champions, the ringmaster champion. I, I dig it. Like <laughs> I don't know, it's something it, it clicks. Like everything, yeah. whoever designed this, um, it works. It, like it's it's so funny because let's talk a little bit. We're gonna veer off. We're going all. Over, I apologize. We're going all over the place. But like um, the, the venue that it's in. Very unique venue. It's it's not a it's not a wrestling. Venue. It's like a, it's a building. It's if you're familiar with Austin downtown, downtown Austin, Sixth Street, all this. You know the buildings are, you know what it is. It's like old yeah. downtown. You know, but uh, this building that they're in, um, it's just a two story building, pretty much. No, it's 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 I don't know how big it is. It's it's not that big at all. Six hundred and forty seven people were in there. That's you what I you think get the said? you get the ring in there with about five rows out of people, and then maybe like. Ten rows out, like maybe four or five rows uh, on three sides, and then the side that we were on, there was like eleven or twelve rows, oh, and there were like two rows too many because they yeah. like the front rows scoot back, and then everybody else started scooting back, and then like the chairs are like hitting each yeah. other, and you couldn't sit there. That was my one thing. Yeah. That was the, the people were still standing up anyway. There were empty chairs because there's no leg room. Yeah, but um, I kind of thought that part added to it that there's actually people standing, and then like the street kind of inclined, mm -hmm. so there's people like on the outside <laughs> that didn't pay, and they're like through the window yeah. peeping through, like oh my god, to the point where what where I was going to transition to one of the titles, um, one of the guy the uh, the sideshow champion, right, he, he uh, uh he won by chicanery, 
So they wound up going over the earpiece and say, hey, look, management just said that this belt is on is now being defended 24 seven until South by Southwest. And the comedy guy, Jar Jervis. Jervis, he was outside. And then when he heard it, he was like peeping out. And then when he heard it, he like just went ah, and he ran around the building yeah. to get back inside. I was like, oh, OK, so I guess that's the that's the next match. But basically, the next person that came out was Leva Bates. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some of y'all know her as Blue Pants. She has a gimmick where she comes dressed up as other people. Apparently, she came dressed up as Nakamura at one event. Yeah, last, the last month well, it was uh, Nakamura. Yeah, well, this month, <laughs> this month she was Joey Ryan, yeah. lollipop and oil and oil. everything. And she pins him. She becomes the new champion. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If you've, if, if you've seen the gimmick of Joey Ryan, and you think to yourself, man, that'd be hot if that was a chick. You're right. It is hot if it's a chick. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> While I pop, pop, baby oil, everything. And, yeah. That was my biggie impression right there, basically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she she, she <laughs> won. She won. Oh, man. Everybody. What did you say? Me. What did you say? I was like, oh, fuck. Dude, Joey Ryan has to come out and take this shit. Guess what happened after that? Joey Ryan, Ryan came, came out and rolled her up and beat her. She's the, he is the new sideshow champion. And what did he do after that? He ran like a motherfucker <laughs> out to the back. We turned around. He's across the street. <laughs> <laughs> and then, by the way, hey, uh, intermission. That's how we start intermission with Joey yeah. Ryan out in the street, making sure ain't nobody going to kick his ass for this title. He just won. Yeah. Oh, sweet Jesus. That was double duty for uh, Joey Ryan because before that, he fought uh, Scott Norton. Oh, my God. <laughs> the dynamic in that yeah. match. Scott Norton straight up macho -ness. Like, he's not going to tolerate any kind of gay bullshit. But the funny thing, he worked with it. It worked. Oh, my God. Because he he sold it. Like, that was fun. Scott Norton sold it, you know? And, um, of course, Joey Ryan got killed. Yeah. And but it should. was fun. Yeah. Yeah. And so for him to end the night with the with him with the title, <clears throat> that's damn near fitting. <laughs> Whenever like Scott Norton was selling a hurt leg after he did atomic drop on Joey Ryan. <laughs> oh, dude, and Scorpio actually sold the atomic drop to uh, to Le uh, Leva. Yes, yes. He did an atomic drop to Leva, and he sold it that his knee was hurting because she had super. And then she oh, did, and, and she, she even taunted him. She's like, "Touch my dick!" And they're all the crowd like, oh. "But then, but he, <laughs> but he and then she made him yeah. grab it, and he." he she did, all, the, she did the same moves Joey yeah. does where he's like, yeah. and she's like, and then he like tosses him up. All <laughs> fucking hey, dude. I love blue pants. God <laughs> damn. That was fun, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we move on to what um, might have been the most entertaining for me. This was a new concept that I, I think TNA has tried to do something like this. But they had a battle royal for the tag championships. Oh, yes. um, so here's the here's how it worked. There were six teams, 12 humans total. Well, 15 if you count Shane Lee and Shane Taylor and Keith Lee. <laughs> but uh, basically, we, we start with two guys. Every other minute, another another person comes another in. Another tag team partner. Another yeah. tag team. Yeah. Even, if you, even if one half of your team gets eliminated. You still got a shot. The last two people that are in the ring, their teammates come out, and it becomes a one-on-one -on -one tag team match to a one-fall finish. Right. <gasps> one-fall finish. Yeah. yeah. And – Dude, it was fucking fun. It was. Yeah, it worked. Um, I I got a kick out of it. I don't know if that was the general uh, perception or whatever, but I had that history of the boys and Pretty Boy Killers in ROH, and that just kind of continued a little bit more uh, on this one. But, dude, this, this match, these teams, dude, I, I, was, I was excited for this match, not only for Pretty Boy Killers. We're big fans of Heath Lee and, and Shane Taylor. The, you know, we like the boys, you know, fan up, fan up, all that stuff. Um, but we also had um, Gorillas of Destiny from uh, New Japan. Tama Tonga and Tama Lao. Yeah. yeah. Um, i never seen – obviously, i never seen them live, <laughs> you know. Um, so that was, that was kind of cool. The, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm bad with their names. But the, the one with the face paint. Um, Tama Tonga. That's a fucking beast, dude. He yeah. was tearing it up in that ring. The other guy, he was he I could tell he might be more technical sound, but that other dude was, he was like ripping through everybody in that match, dude. Um the, the speed he had going to the uh beating people in the turnbuckles. Yeah. Um uh, we had we were supposed to have a killer elite squad. Mm -hmm. Um but I found out ahead of time that uh Lance, Lance Hoyt, Hoyt overdosed on water burgers. <laughs> so basically, uh homegrown Texas well, Texas talent 
Houston Carson, we've seen him around in Lone Star and a couple of other. He had a trial. Texas line. Honor. Yeah. yeah, Texas line. Uh, he teamed up with uh, Davey Boy Smith Jr. Yeah. And um, their chemistry actually worked. I like the dynamic that they were going with. Um, they were trying to, they were each trying to eliminate one of the pretty boy killers and they were calling each other. I was like, yeah. bro, help me. He's like, no, you come help me. No, you come help me. And that descent got both of them eliminated to the point where they just started going at it on each other, which is a pretty good way to build up a match for next month's feet for next month's event. And I thought that was fucking solid. And I don't know if that was the first time they have tagged together. Like it was a last minute thing. Um, Kayfabe wise, like if they've ever tagged before, yeah. or if this is the first time they've met, or whatever the case will be. But um, yeah, I think it worked, and, and it made sense. Like I, I saw them fighting on the outside. After that. I was like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, was there another team in there? Um, there's six teams. Oh, there's uh, Ricky Starks um, and his partner. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. Um, yeah, Ricky Solace. Starks. Solace. Yeah, Solace. Um, I, I'm not. I'm not familiar with Solace, but it's Ricky Starks. You know, you're if you've been in Texas. Yeah. wrestling in these shows you know who he is speaking of texas local boy uh another local talent andy dalton and his partner they were uh in this team too so yeah but he was like they were like kind of tossed out pretty yeah. quickly and we're yeah. not a big fan honestly i'll be up but um but it, it came down well we thought it was down to the boys and pretty boy killers but um Dude, that elimination was fun too. Like, yeah. like Keith Lee, uh, no, Shane Taylor, no, Keith Lee had one of the boys. Shane Taylor was about to knock knock him out a dead one. The uh, the boy ducks and he eliminates Keith Lee by accident. Yeah. And then both the boys come from behind and eliminate Shane. I was like, wow, that was believable. Yeah. That that's how they got eliminated because you see Shane Taylor, he's about to get eliminated by two or three guys, and then here comes Keith Lee and he's not running, he's running. Yeah. He's taking his time. He dude takes off the hood. Dude, really, and dude. then real quick, he beats the Fuck on whenever, everybody. Whenever Keith Lee makes uh, an entrance, he looks like a dude, beast. He's got presence. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. We've, met, the, the ass, we've met them behind the scenes. We've talked to them a few times. We've seen them wrestle several times, especially here, here at home. Dude, both of them. The things that Shane Taylor can do. Yeah. Man. And Keith Lee just – those two guys you don't want to fuck with. Dude, <laughs> Keith Lee is uh, signing with the Evolve. Yeah. Yeah, dude. He's, he's moving up, man. Um, I would, His debut is against Brian Cage at the next Evolve show. Oh, well, Brian Cage. <laughs> um, you want to get that later? Fuck it. Let's get to it now. Brian Cage against Zack Sabre Jr. Another first <clears throat> for, for us yeah. to see uh, Zach Zack Sabre, Sabre. Jr. Um, we saw Brian Cage um, at the South by Southwest show last year mm -hmm. uh, for Lucha Underground, uh, but he's the, he's the current champion right now, mm -hmm. and he fought uh, Zack Sabre Jr. And I... Uh, if you've seen Zack Sabre Jr. fight, you're kind of used to his style. You, you, you probably know what kind of match you're getting with that. But it was your, it was your you know, strength versus smarts, you know, brain versus brawn type mm -hmm. storytelling in the match. Um, but, yeah, it was pretty much Cage going in for the kill for a move. Um, he And then Zack Sabre wraps his linky body around him. And then just Cage just power bombs him out. Yeah. Um, it was a fun match. Um but that ending to that that power bomb, the sit down power bomb, oh, that looks sick. Uh, yeah, for all the talent that Zack Saber had, I knew from the second he walked into that ring, you gonna die. It was a wonderful death. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, the kind of year Zack Saber's having, dude, in the last twelve months, yeah. he's wrestled Kurt Angle, he's wrestled Keith Lee, he's wrestled uh, uh, Cage, he's uh, got highlighted in a uh, cruiserweight tournament in WWE. Um, Dude, this next generation of guys, yeah, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah, and um, it was just, it was just good to say. Yeah, I've seen these people wrestle now in in, in this car. Yeah. But that was uh, that was um, one of the highlighted matches on there. But what was we we kind of talked about uh, the tag team? What about the women? The the lady, the roommate. If there is one disappointment, it's this women's match, and it's not because of the talent. Number one, Rachel E ain't nothing to fuck with. I had no idea she was that over in Austin. If you None. told me how over Rachel Ellering was in Austin in this show, I, I you're None. crazy. You're crazy. She was probably the most over person in that card. Yeah. And look at these people that are on this card. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I, I blew my mind. Like I don't know, like her history in Austin. If someone, if our listeners can tell us, I'll be glad to hear it. Uh, but Chelsea Green is fucking delicious. She's come out wearing a Harley Quinn outfit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
And let's talk but, about yeah. Let's talk about but yeah. I these guys were telling me before the show I was like, dude, there's already pictures floating around of sixty star without her mask. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I want to keep the kayfabe. <laughs> That's I don't so funny. Wanna, we had that conversation. I don't, don't want to know what she looks like. <laughs> I already appreciate her the way she is now. Well, guess the what? The way I see her on Lucha. Well, not anymore because sexy Dulce does not wear a mask. My God. Yeah. She is beautiful. She's hiding that. I don't know why they're covering that up on, on television on Lucha Underground. And to top it all off, to watch her do the grind that oh. the Bellas do, oh. oh, you could hear a collective orgasm from all the guys when she did that in the ring. I was like, man, match of the year. <laughs> the bell hasn't even rung. Not all the participants are in the ring. I'm this like, is I'm awesome. Done. I'm like, done. <laughs> um, it was actually supposed to be a four-way. Uh, Tessa Blanchard was supposed to be the sick. Match. Tessa yeah. was sick, so she couldn't make Which it. Which is a shame because so. I like I like her more than I like Rachel Ellering. But so this was announced as a triple threat match. To one fall, mm-hmm. one fall. The match was going on good. Awesome, awesome work by all the three ladies. Um, well, sexy Dulce pin Chelsea, Chelsea Green. Right. It's like, yeah, sexy star is the winner. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Chelsea Green has been eliminated. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> but you just said it was for one fall. Like, yeah. So it, it turned out to be an elimination match. That's surprising. We'll, we'll get to the second surprise yeah. in a minute. In a minute, but. Uh, um, but then after that, like the match just kind of fell apart, man. It, it, I don't know if the match fell apart, but for me, my my um, my uh, interest started to wane because the match was about maybe thir- I want to say 12, 13 minutes. I was like, that was a good way for yeah. the match to end. Yeah, stop it. They did good. S- sexy one. Let's. This is a four and a half hour event. Yeah, and there's still about two or three more matches after this one. It's like, all right. Awesome. The women did a good job. Let's keep going. <laughs> and it, it it didn't. Like we it, the match kept going between um that was another like Rachel five or six and, minutes, and, I would think. Sexy, uh, yeah. That match. And uh Rachel winds up getting the win. Good for her. Oh, by the way, she's the new lady of the ring uh, of the ring champion. I was like, Adi Adi Adi. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> this was not announced on Twitter. This was not announced this was on, a the, on the poster. Match? They what? might they might have had a blurb or two last show, but people that are walking in that are buying tickets that are new to this, we have no idea what's going on. Just like the interference in the Scorpio Sky match for the slideshow title, right. we have no idea what the fuck's going on. So at least in the women's match, they could have made they themselves could have made it clear. Hey, triple threat match, uh, elimination. This is for the belt. Holy shit! I would have I would have like if my anticipation level wasn't already at ten, it would have probably been at eleven going into it. Right. But then once we got there and it happened the way it happened, it just felt a little conjoined to yeah, me. Yeah, it did. No, I agree. As far as everything else on that card, I, I think that is kind of like the the. And it's and again, it's, it's not it's something not right about it. It's not know. much as it's not as much as the talent in the ring as much as what it was presented. And that just goes back to if they would have told us from the beginning. It wasn't booked, right? Been, yeah. I think the booking, the match, and everything all together, I, I think it just kind of – something Something wasn't right on that. But that's that's hardly um, – The ladies' fault. Yeah, and that's hardly something to complain about on the show that's like this because it's there's so many good matches on this. Um, that's like the mole on Cindy Crawford. You still like Cindy Crawford regardless. What about ACH and Jeff Cobb? This is how I was when the match happened because there's this match and then there's probably two more matches left and we've already been there for three and a half hours and the competition still coming. You had ACH versus Jeff Cobb, first time ever. Wait, Jeff Cobb, wait, not if you don't know who Jeff yeah. Cobb is, he is Matanza Cueto from Lucha Underground, the guy that's shorter than Travis. You're still in my thunder, fucker. <laughs> Go ahead. No, shorter than me. <laughs> what did you think of the match? <laughs> Sorry. Dick. <laughs> Got anything else you want to say that I was going to say? Yeah, that's all right. All right. <laughs> it was a good match, though. It was fun. Um, you know what? I got this vibe from uh, Jeff Cobb during the match, um, other than the fact that he's shorter than me. Um He's got like a Taz 
I got. I was getting like a Taz vibe a from him. Suplex machine. Yeah, like the way he he, he was uh, his style and everything. You don't see that on Lucha because he's wearing the big jumpsuit, and mask, and everything. But take that away, and you got like a singlet uh, wrestling attire uh, and a name. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like he's. Yeah, I, I got like he could be like the next Taz type thing. Um, but him going up against ACH, we all we all knew ACH is friend of the show. I, I went up to ACH um afterwards he remembered us yeah yeah um <laughs> so that was that was fun it was just a fun match um i know lately ach has been kind of doing like a tweener heelish turn in his character and it kind of was but it wasn't overt or anything it was just yeah. kind of more cocky i, I was so. not expecting jeff cobb to win this though for as over as ACH is, I was like, okay, this is going to be fun. But in, in Texas? How, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how's ACH going to win this? Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Come kill it was a good surprise. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Dude, and, and you said it. I, I, I mentioned this earlier when we were when we were out there. Did the fact that you meeting Jeff Cobb kill the Matanza Cueto character for you on Lucha? Um, yes and no. Like, I, <laughs> I'm standing right next to him. I don't even know it was him. I was like – who the fuck is this guy? And oh, you're like, dude, I, look I, at the shirts behind you. I, was like, I turned around, oh, it's with Tonzo's shirt. Oh, what the fuck? And I was like, <laughs> Matt, and then he looked down at him like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then I was like, what the fuck? That's he's, so... a, he's a cool guy though, man. He's cool. Yeah, he's, he's nice awesome. Guy. But you know, and we're and we're after the show, we're walking home, and you're like, did that just ruin Lucha? Did you just ruin Lucha Underground for yourself? And it took me a second to figure it out. I was like, you know what? No. It didn't. Defend yourself. It actually made me appreciate Lucha Underground even more. The fact that they can take this uh, five-foot midget to make him look like um, a seven-foot killing machine slasher monster dude and make him believable as a killer. And they did that. He eats people. He's bull. He's a beast. <laughs> Whatever. You know what you're going to do. But, yeah, like, take this small little dude and make him – Bigger than life. Dude, and some of those gut wrench suplexes. Oh, dude, he did a suplex on ACH that folded him up like a goddamn oh, accordion. Yeah. Oh, you can hear a collective, oh. <laughs> like, loves you from you, me, Scott. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Dude, like, watching him do the fall of man or whatever he calls it, um, his finisher, mm -hmm. that, that, that reverse little, power slam. Yeah, little, yeah, where he takes the momentum and he yeah. like, oh, slams him dude. down in a power slam. Yeah. It, oh, man, it looks sick. Yeah, I, I have a I have a a fonder appreciation for the character Matanza Cueto now. Yeah, watching the moves that he does done the in person like that, oh, shit, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, oh, we had a um an open challenge. Uh, Jack Stain came out. Godzilla, Jack Stain came out. I'm, I I like Jack Stain. I liked him when uh, him and uh, Ray Rowe were in uh, Lone Star and NWA and all that stuff. Um, so you know, you say Jack Stain's on the show. I know this dude's a beast. You know, um, and he just looks, he just looks intimidating. He like, killed a couple of, killed a couple of jobbers and won a real competition. And then he got it. Trevor Lee. Yeah. Another TNA, uh, <laughs> guy. <Star. laughs> um, but we're not making fun of Trevor Lee. We're making fun of TNA. Yeah. Trevor Lee is over as fucking Austin. And man, I think he's an, actually, honestly, I think he's just an internet darling. And we, so? uh, we just kind of missed that boat. I think so. Well, we I, swam to it because we were there, and man, he's he's good. He's he's got some intensity. Uh, I I don't know what it. I've seen some of him on TNA, and it feels like what we saw there in Austin is not what we get at TNA. Like there's something missing that they don't let him do. I don't or, know. Or, or, or I can't what, see them. Man, I can't. I, yeah. He looked like he can, like he can go, especially with Jax. Jax got a good way of 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 between Jax, Keith Lee, and Brian Cage and Shane Taylor. They have they do a good job of. Putting over people that are smaller yeah. than them, but making yeah. them believe that they, it's actually happening. Right. And uh, Trevor Lee's a cool pinball to go off of freaking Jack Dane. And that was a fun match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, of course, Jack Dane killed him. Yeah. <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> um, but speaking of, I just mentioned him, Ray Rowe. He was there. He fought um, Donovan Dijak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people like Dijak. Uh, me, I'm kind of like neutral on him because I, I, I know him from ROH. I've seen him when he was coming up uh, in ROH. But I was never like high on the guy, mm -hmm. um, and I know he's gone on to do. He's he's not in ROH anymore. He's kind of gone on to do other things right now. I I, I just kind of missed that boat on him as well too. Um, but I know, uh, you know, I know who he is. You say Dijak. I was like, okay, yeah. Um, 
But that was uh, that was okay match. Here's the problem with with the company's matches. This one being one of them. This this match, Dijak versus Rowe, came off right after that triple threat match. And I was that's a tough act to follow, dude. That during the match, I was like, I was telling you, I was like, I hate to be whoever has to follow that fucking match, yeah, because that was uh, that killed that that drained everybody yeah. on that on that match. Woo. Uh, but that leaves us all to the closeout of the show. We got uh, Rick King King Ricochet uh, versus Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara. Have you seen him wrestle before? Never. Never. Yeah, a lot of people that we talked to. Haven't seen him until they came to Wrestle Circus. Um, you, you bumped into an old friend who didn't know about him until the last show. Oh, he came Terry to. Thomas. Yeah, he he's a, a newfound fan of Terry's. Par- of, uh, of Sammy. Of Sammy. Apparently, Sammy's a heel in that promotion. Mm. But uh, you can't help but like the guy. And I couldn't tell the difference because he's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he is damn near like the next, the next, the next layer of Ricochet. You know what I like about him? Like, um, I know he's supposed to be a heel and all that, but. Um, it's some things you can get over just by the subtle things. Um, one of them is just the way you present yourself. Like I mentioned earlier, Keith Lee, he has that presence of when him when he walks out. I noticed the same thing with um, with Sammy because, but when that match started, it was the main event. The 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 ring announcer he got everybody in the you know around the ring, so everybody was standing. We could not see shit. Um, but when he called out uh, Guevara to come out. When he came out to his music and everything, he was he was like doing this, like the the fist front, the fist raised in the air, like all the way around the ring. That's kind of like an I hate to say old school, like to me it feels like an old school way of you know you're promoting yourself pretty much. Mm-hmm. You're you're evoking that confidence and this is me. Look at me, pay attention to me as he's walking around, you know. And through the crowd of people that I couldn't see, I could I could see where he was because I could see his arm. Yeah, and that just evokes that. Look at this guy, you know, and um, and then of course, to counter that, Ricochet comes out with a fucking cloak and a fucking crown and shit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> King Star Scream over here. Yeah, and um, you know what? Here, here's the thing about this match. That was, I, I agree with them putting that match on last, even though it was a title match, um, because sometimes even in, in WWE, you put the spotlight match last to send the crowd home happy, you know. Um, even before the match started, we're waiting in line. I saw so as many shirts as I saw. I saw more people wearing the same Guevara shirts more than anybody. Say like, I don't get the panda thing, but I, I, I don't either. <laughs> but whatever, that's another topic for another story, I yeah. guess. Um, another day. But um, so they had their match. Um, here's the thing, though. For me, and this is not a knock on them. I think I've talked about this in the shows. You're either a fan of what the way Ricochet wrestles. And whoever you know, he, you got the Will Ospreys, and he, I'll even throw Sam Guevara in that in that category now, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, Ricochet himself. But um, the whole um, acrobatic, um, I, I think called. I think at one point I, I said it, the Cirque du, uh, Cirque du Soleil, yeah, of, <laughs> a style of wrestling where it's more of just a performance art piece than a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. You know, a fight. You know, and it, some people like it, some people don't like it. But for me, I already knew what I was getting myself into with this match, so I wasn't like, "Oh, what's gonna happen?" You know, I, I kind of were you the I same way? Tell. Were you the same way? I, could, I mean, you were sitting next to me. I could tell that you weren't as like enthralled or like captivated by everything. Well, as plus you were it's been four and a half hours. <laughs> I've already seen a badass fucking four hours. Card. Yeah, I've already seen that fucking triple threat match. Like you, I, I dare you to top that shit. That yeah. might have been the other flaw, and I don't know if it's just old man Chris here, but dude. After four hours being in that sweat box, oh, God damn, dude. you get drained. And again, three, two and a, a half hour drive from us, Austin. Man. We were walking around a lot that day. We waited in line for an hour and a half. Um, four hours of screaming and jumping yeah. and yelling and high fiving and like jumping standing around, sitting down, standing up, yeah. sitting down, chanting this, yelling and this. Yeah. To end it like that, man. I, I like you even told me, hey, are you gonna like record any of this or Facebook Live any of this? I was like, dude, I'm gonna just sit back and enjoy it because I was fucking exhausted, not in a bad way, but fuck, like I didn't have enough energy left to give. So as soon as the match started and they're already like in the crowd, I was like, I'm gonna wait till they either come to me or <laughs> they get in the ring. Until 
Sammy Guevara climbs up the fucking monkey bars <laughs> and winds up doing a moonsault like 15 feet off the ground, and everybody started losing their shit. We've like, already oh. shared it because yeah. I think he shared it on his Facebook. Yeah, we, and we, we shared that. Yeah. So that's when I was like, okay, I guess I need to get up for this. <laughs> yeah. It was a fun match, though. Yeah. Like, I can't complain about it. I can't say anything, anything bad about it because, for all intents and purposes, if you want to take that aspect of what I was saying about what they're doing, they did a damn good job on their of yeah. what they do in that match. Yeah. Um, Ricochet is probably the best at that style of wrestling, um, for for better or worse. If you're a, a proponent of that, or if you if you don't like it, it's it's all subjective. I'm the same way. I'm just, mm-hmm. you know I might not like it as much as you like it, or whatever the case would be. But that's beside the point. The point is, it was entertaining. Oh hell yeah! yeah. You, if, that, if you're looking for a match to send the crowd on happy, yeah. that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he got on the stick after that, and he just kind of send the home, you know, send the crowd put home, the, put everybody over. Yeah, yeah. That was it, though, man. Whew. Four and a half hours. But it was good four and a half hours. This wasn't no fucking WrestleMania drag. 32. It didn't drag. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. You know? The intermission helped. Yeah. And it, it, that was another thing about the intermission. It was just like, uh, yeah, they said like 10 or 15 minutes, but you had time to. <laughs> it's funny because it's like intermission's good. Good. I'm going to go outside and chill out. Uh, no, it's hotter outside. Because it's January, and it's February. Because it's in Texas in February, and it's hotter outside than it is inside. And it's crowded. Yeah. And the beer's already starting to get a little warm. And people are sneaking in food from 7 Eleven. Had I fucking known this, I would have brought food. <laughs> yeah, people behind us were eating a damn pizza from 7 Eleven. I don't know if it was good or not, but it smelled good. That's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a good show. Um, it was fun. I had a good time. I'm glad I went. Um, like I said, some of the uh, the wrestling stars on here from um, from the indie scene. I either wanted to see them for a long time, or I've already seen them and enjoyed them. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm fans of uh, you know Keith Lee, Shane Taylor, Jack Stane, uh, Raymond Rowe, ACH. Um, you know when I I'll, and I got to see people I never saw before, Zack Saber Jr. Um, I, I know who Sammy Guevara is now. Yeah. Uh, Gorillas of Destiny from uh, from Bullet Club. Um, it's biggest detriment um, calling myself out here at least. If I can't get off of my lazy ass to go to a wrestling promotion 45 minutes from here, there is no fucking chance in hell that I'm going to go three hours every month. Oh, yeah, no. no. Especially on three hours of sleep to go to work the next day. No. However, there is a strong argument to make that if it's that consistent and we get enough people to rotate cars or we can find a way to make it work, for this, I will most definitely find a way to make it work. Not so much next show because the next show is on a Friday night at 9 p.m. at South by Southwest. Crowds, it's gonna. If be you've insane. ever been to a South by Southwest, hell, if you were fortunate enough to go see Lucha Underground a couple of years ago at their South by Southwest uh, debut, hmm. um, you're waiting in lines, you're waiting in heat, you're waiting in in the stench of other people, and it's a late <sighs> night, and man. I, That's no. not your tip. It's not your typical schedule for your monthly wrestling show, um, unless they're going to do it on pay per view. And even if they do, I, 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 <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm, I'm telling you right now, dude. Twenty five bucks is worth it. Yeah, for a monthly show, whatever they come up with in uh, April, May, June, July, August, September. I'll if, if, if they can, can if they can keep these kinds of cards coming. I'll I'll make an effort. I can't guarantee, but for me, I, you I'll know make- what? I'm gonna at least make a guarantee that this will not be the only Wrestle Circus event in 2017 that I will be at. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. it was worth it. Twenty five dollars? That's a damn it's good a deal. A whole lot cheaper than going to California. And even well, then, well, <laughs> well. Let's do the math here. Uh, I'm going to California in a couple of days. Sixty two dollars round trip on Spirit. Uh, plus twenty five dollars Airbnb, uh, twenty five dollars ticket. That's about one hundred bucks. How much did we spend to go to Austin? Say if you were to go by yourself to Austin. Okay, well the ticket's twenty five. Um, gas round trip. Ways. Um, what? So sixty bucks in gas, thirty thirty. Right. Um, food. Um, well sixty and then twenty five is eighty five. So. Yeah, about hundred bucks. If it's on a Saturday, would you spend the night in Austin so you wouldn't have to drive back that night? Mm, maybe. And then that's another what? 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. Maybe we should go to PWG. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, 
Is that it? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, new edition of the Dark Match. Again, this was us talking about uh, Wrestle Circus. Um, and, uh, man, if they keep on going, they came out of nowhere. They came from obscurity. Um, but, man, they're knocking out of the park with uh, what we saw. So, um, yeah, until next time, you'll see us again on our weekly show. Um, again, I will not be there. Well, this, I will be this gone. week. But if you're watching this yeah. in the future, whatever, yeah. he's still here, whatever. <laughs> um, but, yeah, if you're watching this right now on our YouTube channel, uh, hit the uh, subscribe button below. If you want to leave a comment, if you were there, if you want to leave a comment, leave a comment below and tell us what you thought your favorite match was if you're there. Or if you bought the iPad review, tell us what you thought of the, of the stream and everything. Um, and if there's other events that you want us to, to focus on or do a review of, let us know. Hit us up. Um, if you're not here on our YouTube channel, go on our Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Houston Wrestling Radio. Also on the Twitter machine. H Wrestling Radio. Yes. Um, this will be on iTunes in a few days, so <laughs> subscribe to us. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, if you're on the uh, audio only, iTunes, uh, I'll try to get it out there for you. Yeah. Um, so um, until then, I think that's it, man. That's it, man. How, what, what is the closing line that we do for this? You know what? Top guys, out. Oh, we apologize to Scott because he was here. With, he wasn't here with us. Tough shit. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, that was fun. We got to do it again. Yeah, we absolutely. need to drive out. It was a fun show. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. We got wrestling to watch. Oh god. Oh shit, we still got wrestling to watch. Oh god, that's wrong. <laughs>